So in our last video, we said that the heart is a four chamber pump, right? Four chamber pump. And how does it actually pump? How does it contract? Same way any other muscles contract. They feel a depolarization and that causes them to contract. The special thing about this, however, is that it can contract on its own. It can depolarize on its own. So it can self depolarize. And another important thing is that these cells are connected to each other via gap junctions, via gap junctions. And so when one cell depolarizes, it can spread to other cells and that causes the heart to contract by itself in a synchronized fashion. Okay. Contract by itself in a synchronized fashion. Very, very important. Let's see exactly how it does it. It starts with this small little node in the sinus, in this little cavity of your right atria, your right atria. We call this the sino, meaning sinus, atrial node. What a fitting name. What a fitting name. And it can automatically depolarize and it'll spread that signal via gap junctions to your other atria and your atria will depolarize together. It'll also send a little signal to another node that connects it to the ventricles called your atrial ventricular node. What a fitting name. Or your AV node. Now your AV node is smaller in diameter and that kind of slows the conductance down a bit. Slows that depolarization down a bit. All right, slows down. Gives it a little bit of a pause and that pause is very important because we said your, the function of your atria is to contract and fill your ventricles with blood. And then your ventricles contract and push that blood back out, right? So you fill it with blood and then you push it back out. You don't want them to contract at the same time, otherwise they're just kind of like pushing blood against each other. So you need that little pause. You need that little pause. All right, pause. Okay. And once your AV node gets a signal, it will send it to this bundle called the bundle of hiss bundle of his and that will run down your ventricles run down your ventricles you have a left branch a left branch that supplies your left heart and you have a right branch what do you think that does supplies your right heart so i'll say left and right branches of this bundle and some little pathology here if you have something wrong with your av node or if you have something wrong with your bundle you can have what we call a heart block you're literally blocking the conductance and your heart doesn't beat the way it should. If something's wrong with your left branch, we call it a left brandle, brandle, left branch block. So your left side isn't beating the way it should. If something's wrong with your right branch, we call it a right branch bundle block. And so your right heart isn't beating as well as it should. It's just something to keep in mind. So if you see that terminology in the wards or in future videos, don't get confused. Yeah, that's what it means. <clears throat> that's what it means. So it travels all the way down to the bottom of your ventricles and it meets something called your Purkinje fibers, fibers, your Purkinje fibers that wraps around the rest of your ventricles. And once it hits these Purkinje fibers, it goes into like turbo mode. It goes super, super fast and it has to go fast. It has a lot of space to cover, right? It has to cover your entire ventricles and causes your ventricles to contract. So, all right, super fast. All right. And that's what causes your heart to contract. That's what causes your heart to contract. This is what they want you to know, but what do they actually test on the step? What do they actually ask on the step? I'll show you some things that they actually ask and test you on the step. One is the speed of conductance. Speed of conductance, how fast do things conduct? And we just said that your Purkinje fibers, once you hit your Purkinje fiber, they go into turbo mode because they have a lot of ground to cover. And that's actually the fastest fiber, Purkinje. Then after that, they notice that your atria contract the second quickest. Second, is that proper grammar? Is the second fastest? And then it goes, <laughs> and then it goes ventricles, and then it goes the slowest. What's, what did we say was the slowest? Wasn't that your AV node? A, V, node. The way I've seen it asked is that they'll talk about a researcher that's doing tests, checking out different conductance rates of the heart. 
and they'll have one that conducts at 0.12 seconds and one at 0.08 one at one second and all this stuff and then they want you to kind of match the fastest one to Purkinje, match the slowest one to AV node and kind of mix and match them. Yeah, that's, how they, that's how they like to test you. So as long as you know the speed of conductance, you can probably get that question right. <clears throat> that's one way they like to ask this on the step. Another way they like to ask on the step is that they want you to know that if something happens to your SA node, your heart is smart enough to say, okay, something's wrong with my SA node. I'm just gonna disregard it. I still need a beat, I still need to conduct. I'll just go to the next best thing. I'll just move on down to the AV node. The AV node will now be my pacemaker, my conductor, my conductor. And if your AV node goes out, then it'll move on to your bundle of his. And if that goes out, it goes to your Purkinje. So it just goes down the list. Because your heart is so important that if your SA node goes out, it's not gonna stop, right? It has to keep on working. So it just goes down the list. And so, all right. Your pacemaker is usually your SA node, but if it doesn't work, it'll go to your AV, bundle, etc. Go down the list. What can happen to make your SA node go out? Well, all of this is found in your right atria, right? What supplies your right heart? What vessel supplies your right heart? We just learned this like five minutes ago. That'd be your right coronary artery, right? So if you have like a right coronary artery infarct, if you have some sort of blockage there, then your SA node can go out and your AV node can go out. And then you have to rely on your bundles and your Purkinje fibers and all that stuff. Okay. That's another way they really, really like to ask this. And the last way they like to ask this, your SA node knows that your AV node is slow, knows that it's going to slow down. So to compensate, it beats a little bit faster. Beats a little bit faster. So beats per minute will go your SA node, it's the quickest, and then it'll go to your AV, your bundle, etc. Kind of like the same word as this. Not conductance, we're not talking about conductance here. We're not talking about electrical conductance, we're talking about literal beats per second. Right? Beats per, sorry, beats per minute. Right? So your SA node is quicker because it knows it's gonna have to slow down. And so it kind of compensates by beating a little bit quicker. Beating a little bit quicker. I think that's all I wanna talk about on this topic. And really make sure you know this code because that's the way I've seen it asked on the step. And I want you to get a good grade. We just talked about how your heart can self depolarize, right? and a little pathway it goes, but how does it actually self-depolarize in the first place? What's the physiology behind that? What's the physiology behind how it can self-depolarize? How do your nodes, like your SA node and your AV nodes, self-depolarize? We'll just look at the resting membrane potential of these nodes. Now, the resting membrane potential for most cells have to deal with the, the sodium potassium pump, right? Potassium wants to keep it negative, negative. Sodium wants to make it positive. Some other ions that are important here is calcium. Calcium also wants to make it positive. You usually start at a negative resting potential and you kind of wait for a depolarization. However, your SA nodes and your AV nodes have a special, special channel called the funny sodium channel. sometimes called the LF channel. And this channel will leak out sodium. And because it leaks out sodium, it will want to approach sodium. It will want to approach the potential of sodium. So it kind of creeps up to that threshold and makes it really unstable. And sometimes it can self-depolarize, self-depolarize. And when it depolarizes, it will open these long acting calcium channels, sometimes called L calcium channels. And calcium will come in and want to reach the calcium potential. Okay? So it will skyrocket. And when calcium channels open, they pull in more calcium. Sometimes we call it calcium induced calcium. Calcium induced calcium. However, once it hits a certain point, the calcium channels will close. Calcium close. And now your potassium channels will open. Potassium channels will open. And it will want to reach towards the potassium side. So now it will drop back down to negative. And it will repolarize. Repolarize. 
once it hits a certain level, your calcium channels will close. And then your funny sodium channels will open again and cause it to creep towards its threshold and make it unstable and sometimes it can self-depolarize and that cycle will start over and over again. And that is how your nodes self-depolarize. Self-depolarize, okay? So that is the nose, but other parts of your heart, just like the regular cells, like your Purkinje's, like your bundle, um, don't go through this pathway. You go through a different pathway. Go through a different pathway. So all right, non-nodal cells. Usually stays at a negative potential. And your non-nodal cells don't have that funny sodium channel. It doesn't leak that sodium, so it never really gets unstable, it just, it just stays here and it's kind of waiting for depolarization. Just waiting, waiting, waiting until sure enough, it gets a depolarization from your nodes and it will depolarize. Depolarize. Sodium channels open. Sodium channels open and it will skyrocket. It's all right. Fast slope. They want you to know that it's a fast slope. So it looks different, right? It has a very fast slope, almost upright. This one's a little slower. Not only is this one a little slower, but this one is caused from calcium channels opening. All right, so this is from sodium channels, this is from calcium. This one's fast, this one's slow. So a few different things right off the bat. It'll hit a certain point where your sodium channels will now close. Sorry, sodium close. And potassium will open. Potassium open. I want to head towards potassium. But something stops it, something very important. Once potassium opens, your long acting calcium channels, which we talked about here, will open with it. And that will want to go towards calcium, right? So you have potassium open and then you have calcium open, and they kind of cancel each other out. So you have this plateau and this plateau, all right, plateau, is very, very important. This plateau is very important because it, again, prolongs our action potential. Make sure our heart has a time to do everything that it needs to do. So this plateau is very, very important. Plateau. But sooner or later that plateau ends and your calcium channels close. Calcium channels close. And when your calcium channel close, then nothing's stopping your potassium and that will repolarize your cell. Potassium, repolarize. And now you're back at your resting potential, waiting for another signal. Back to normal. Back to normal. That is how your node self depolarizes and that is how your non-nodal cells depolarizes. Very important that you know that. Now something they like you to know is sometimes they'll break this into different stages or different phases. This initial upswing we call phase zero and then when upswing stops and your, pot and your potassium channels open we call phase one. This plateau we call phase two and then this descent we call phase three. And then when we're back to our baseline, when we're waiting, we call that phase four. Phase four. Okay. If we look over here, someone came up with a bright idea and said, hey, this upswing looks like this upswing. We'll call this phase zero. This downswing looks like this downswing. We'll call this phase three. And then this kind of resting waiting period, looks kind of like this resting waiting period. We'll call this phase four. That's pretty, that's pretty hard to remember, isn't it? You go from 403, 403, but that's the way they do it. That's the way they want you to remember it. And hopefully now it kind of makes sense why they, why they label it the way they label it. That is how your heart conducts. That is how your heart depolarizes. And we can actually externally tell if that's functioning, if that's healthy, if that's working by something we call an ECG. We put electrodes on the chest and we kind of measure this electrical conductance. We can measure this electrical conductance via ECG. Via ECG. 
And the ECG usually looks like this. Usually looks like this. And we label each major event alphabetically. We go P, that's not a P, Q, R, S, T. Why didn't they start ABCD? They actually did start ABCD uh, when they first made their ECG. And then they realized that ECG was way wrong. And so they made a second updated correct ECG and they just started it on the second half of the alphabet. So that's why it starts P, Q, R, S, T. Don't remember that and that's not gonna be tested. That's just some, some trivia facts in case you do trivia. Shout out to trivia. <clears throat> so that is how we label our major events. Well, what do these major events actually show? Let's start from the beginning. In the beginning, our atria contract, right? Our atria, our atria contract, and fill our ventricles with blood. So our atria contract, and that's exactly what P shows. Atria contract. Atria contract. And it'll send that signal, send that depolarization, down to our AV node. And our AV node, we say it's slow, it takes a little bit of time. And so this is what this little lag is for. This little period where nothing happens. We sometimes call this our PR interval. Usually less than 20, point 20 seconds. Why do we call it PR when it stops at PQ? Because sometimes people don't have a Q wave. All right, so it just goes to their R. And so that's why I call it PR. In case you're wondering. <clears throat> and then as, after it's reached your AV node and after it's had that little slowdown, it will eventually cause your ventricles to contract. Cause your ventricles to contract. And this is what this huge QRS complex is. So the QRX, QRS complex is your ventricles depolarizing. Depolarize. And it does it really, really fast. Usually less than 0.12 seconds okay at the same time your atria which just finished contracting will finally get to relax finally repolarize so your atria repolarize never forget that your qrs shows your ventricles depolarizing but it also shows your atria relaxing shows your atria relaxing it gets masked because your your ventricles are so strong but it shows that so that's something they like to test you on your ventricles will contract, will contract, and eventually relax. So your T wave is ventricular repull, aka relax. It will repolarize and relax. The time it takes for it to contract and relax is called the ST segment. ST segment. That is the basics of ECG. That is the basics of how your heart conducts. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope it clarifies some things. Thanks.